You know, I've never been particularly good at before and after videos. I think the ADHD gets hold of me and I just want to get in and get the thing looking beautiful again. But this is my pretend before video. When I picked up this vehicle, the steering wheel was in a shocking state. So I did a little bit of research online. I spoke to the hive mind on the Land Rover owners groups on Facebook. These guys are just a huge resource of information. And there are people out there who have already refurbished their steering wheels and they showed me how to do the job right. I'm going to use a tool that I think every dad has been given at least on Father's Day or a birthday, the multi-tool. That's going to be great for me to get in there and widen out these cracks so that I can get some epoxy in. Now I don't know whether these things are made out of resorcinol plastic, casein or rhino horn. I'm trying to think in the 1950s and 60s what plastics would be available. Petrochemicals weren't a big thing. They hadn't developed beyond petrol and the beginnings of pesticides. Plastics were a new thing. So this could actually be casein from um, a milk protein. But just in case it's rhino horn, I'm going to try not to breathe in any of the dust. These are cool little tools, they really are. You can do so many jobs with them. This part here, the steel was exposed and it started to rust from people's sweaty hands. So I've had to dig right back in to get rid of the rust because I don't want the rust to continue under my new epoxy. Washing the steering wheel first made a big difference. That's because where the cracks were, the water seeped in and as I was grinding, the dust that was coming out, that was wet because the water had been allowed to get in, that dust was fluffed up and I could see that it was quite different to the dry dust of the plastic. And I was able to know when I got to the bottom of each crack. They're quite deep, but it's going to be a really easy fix. Right, now what I'm going to be putting into these cracks is this stuff, an epoxy paste, very stiff, and this one's the um, waterproof version. It's 50-50 of two parts, or possibly not quite the same as 50-50, but near enough. You chop off a piece, and then you just spend some time mixing it together. It's a bit hard until it gets moving. You do need strong hands. Here we go, and you mix this up until it's all one uniform colour and then we'll paste that into those deep cracks. There we go, once we get it all to a uniform colour, I can start putting it into these cracks. I'm going to overfill them slightly and tomorrow I'll send it back. In fact, uh, it might not even take until tomorrow. It's a warm day. This would prob could probably be solid hard in an hour or so. Because a four-wheel drive steering wheel gets a lot of wrenching, I'm really pushing this in. I don't want there to be any voids at all. It's got to support. It's got to do a lot of work. 
you've got to be reasonably quick with the stuff on a warm day because it will start to harden reasonably quickly I'm going to have to mix up a bit more to finish this job, I won't have enough. chunk here, I will have enough. You hear that? That's the sound of summer BMW Boxer Twin Touring Bikes. I live on part of a very well-known loop ride that uh, visitors to the area on bikes love to go and ride because of the twisties, the views, the art galleries and the cafes. That's a beautiful day ride for people. This stuff's really good to work with. I mean, it's, it doesn't even come off on your hands. And I've got to tell you the truth, this tube here, this is the end of it, and I would say it's 10 years old. I've had it for a very, very long time. Used it for all sorts of important little jobs like this. I actually used to use it for repairing casings on outboards that had rotted out. I'd clean up the area as much as I could, sandblast it, wire brush it, and then I would repair the surface with this, uh, where the water galleries had rotted out. And uh, it was a good patch up job, get another five years out of an outboard, you know. Let it harden off. And then tomorrow, or maybe later on today, sand it to shape, and then we'll get a nice epoxy two-pack primer on it. Hey, because I've done so well with this uh, CRC Mendit epoxy paste, I'm really happy with it. It sticks like shit to a blanket. Um, and it sands very much like the resin plastic that the steering wheels made of so it's blended in beautifully I'm really happy with the finish so because that is just a hardware store off the shelf kind of a thing instead of me using high quality two-pack automotive professional paint on this to see how that goes I'm gonna do cheap and cheerful I'm gonna do what you could achieve if you only had a local hardware store and you could only buy stuff that was on the shelves. I'm going to buy the good quality primer, high build primer, and a good quality black gloss top coat in a spray can. And I'm going to see just how good a finish we get with those products. If you're a four season Landy driver, there's something that is nice in the winter but not so nice in the summer and that's that warm blast of air that goes into your left calf the back of your leg while you're driving along through the handbrake hole 
if you don't have a decent uh, rubber boot on there because the boots get so old and cracked so easily that um, they're just not worth having. So I'm taking this into the workshop and I'm going to use it as a pattern to make one out of vinyl which will be a lot softer and do a much better job of sealing and should last longer and won't cost a bean to make. Come on. Right, so I've got this piece of vinyl and I'm going to make this boot. So I'm just going to check my seam allowance by putting the material around my sample here and seeing where it comes to on this center line. I'll just even it up side to side. Check them both out and it appears that we've got a half inch seam allowance. So my stitching is going to be half an inch in from this edge and when I get round to here this is the mouth where the handbrake itself comes through I'm going to double this back and sew a nice little pocket into here that gets done first before I sew around the edge and then I turn the whole thing inside out and it looks gorgeous so here we go sides put these two back to back make sure the threads are all facing this way And we're going to sew these two sides together half an inch in from the edge. back tack of three stitches to start and finish make sure that nothing comes unraveled when you start sewing you always hold your threads because they can get pulled back into the machine and get very badly tangled Three, two, three. There we go. 
and that is actually job done all I have to do now is turn it the right side out so now we've got a nice flexible windproof boot the edges all puck it up and it just fits over the handbrake and there's enough excess on the back for when it comes through the metal flange that screws it on for that to fold around and be screwed through on the flange right, so we'll do a quick test fit here Isn't that just lovely? And then the escutcheon plate fits over it. And screws up to here. But before I do that, I'm going to glue the boot to the escutcheon plate. And then, oh, and the glue, yes. Um, there's two types of spray adhesive. This one's the ultra high strength and the other one is what they call general purpose. You have to use the ultra high strength when you're doing anything that's going to get warm. Like um, hood linings on a roof panel, they bake in the sun. If you use the ordinary glue down the track it will let go. And because this gets the heat of the engine, the ordinary glue in time will let go so remember that you've got general purpose and ultra high strength it's got an awesome fan on the um, nozzle really good for large areas but unfortunately there's not a lot you can do when you're doing small areas apart from this grab a piece of scrap material and masks where you don't want the glue. Same on both sides. During the drying period of the glue, there is a time when you can just rub it with your fingers and it balls up and peels off. But that's just some a time that you've got to get. It varies on weather and how much glue you've put on. Okay, so I'm going to leave that to tack off for a few minutes and then I'll just bring the two together. So what I'm going to do now is suspend the boot just there bring this down and oh no I'm not it won't fit over there okay we won't fit there. Um, I'll do it up the other way I'll bring this up from underneath the first thing to do is to line up the two seams with the two ends because if they don't line up it's gonna look really awful so there's one and there's the other squish those down and then the rest of it can just get brought in like that all the way around this is just a scrap of vinyl to be able to bag a scrap of vinyl no problem at all in fact you might even choose to sacrifice something a piece of old lounge suite cushion or something there you go job done nice boot I can go and fit that towards the end of the build along with that refurbished steering wheel that I'm doing at the moment outside. As well as the steering wheel that I'm refurbishing, I've just given these seats some love. What I did was took the skins off and added 
100 millimeter wide four inch strips of 40 millimeter foam on either side and what it's done is given the seats a lovely comfy contour with lateral support that the Land Rover seats just never had. But meanwhile back in the yard here's that steering wheel that I've painted with ordinary spray can epoxy enamel and it looks lovely. I know it's only a small thing but every time you drive the vehicle it's what you have to look at. So I'm really pleased that it's looking so fine. Well there you have it. All the little bits are coming together and we're wrapping things up on Larissa the Lockdown Landy's Rebuild. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for the next vid on Tiny House Off Grid Resources.